Arcade Fire tier list. All right. Yeah, right off the bat, Funeral S tier. Funeral is the best album in the Arcade Fire discography. This is one of the best albums of all time. This is one of the most magical, spellbinding records of all time. One of the most profoundly emotional and moving, nostalgic, beautiful fucking albums ever made. Absolute top tier of indie rock. Song for song, it just, this album just, they killed it so hard on this debut. It's kind of insane, like, to think about. It is a beautiful record. The compositions are gorgeous. And it just, again, it just has magic to it, which is what I love to hear in an album with all this chamber instrumentation. I love to hear magic, and you really get it on this album. So many songs in this that just will never get old for me. In many ways, this, this changed the face of, of, of popular indie music. And Arcade Fire would do that again as well. I mean, it's hard to understate how big of a splash this had, how much of an important album this was for indie in the 2000s. And um, it's a fucking flawless album. It is a fucking flawless album. There was the EP, which I actually have on vinyl because I got it from Record Store Day. The EP is the EP's pretty good. But it definitely, yeah, this album, this album kicks its ass for sure. But yeah, one of the best indie albums of all time easily next up we have neon bible which is going in the b tier neon bible as a follow-up to funeral definitely doesn't live up to the heights of its predecessor um but i think they still managed to pull together a really good album here uh this still has some of the best arcade fire songs like no cars go and intervention um it's a bit of a darker sound and they recorded it in a church, so it's very reverbial, which actually kind of works to its detriment, because this album is a little bit muddy. The production is not very good, and frankly, the production on, the, on, on Funeral is a little bit not perfect either. The recording isn't too great on that album, but the mixing and everything just works. It just sounds lively. It sounds organic. This album sounds not too good. Uh, there aren't a ton of super memorable tracks, but it's very strong when it's on. Um, it's an album I like a lot, but not now my return to so much in the Arcade Fire discography. And that's really all I have to say about it. Next up, we have The Suburbs, which is getting an A tier. The Suburbs is really the second time I think Arcade Fire changed indie music. I think all indie bands in the 2010s kind of followed in the footsteps of The Suburbs to one degree or another. Whether it was the synth direction of a track like Sprawl 2, or it was the more Bruce Springsteen, straightforward indie rock, um, more anthemic kind of style of songs like Ready to Start and The Suburbs. Uh, but conceptually, this album is just brilliant. I love a good suburbia diss track, okay? Because fuck the suburbs, okay? And this album makes a lot of points about that while still remaining very personal it tells that it makes that criticism in a highly personal and emotional way um you know it's not going to relate to everybody but anybody who did grow up in the suburbs is going to find things to relate to in this record um and songwriting wise it is just so goddamn good the songwriting is so good there are so many great songs all over this album um Many of the best Arcade Fire tracks, many that I always come back to, like The Suburbs, Ready to Start, Modern Man, um, Month of May, Suburban War, Sprawl 2. And um, yeah, one of their catchiest, most straightforward and most direct albums. And I just think it is absolutely great. Next up, we have Reflector, which I'll put in the C tier. Reflector also had definitely some impact on indie music with the disco and dance direction that some of its songs took. And uh, those do tend to be the better tracks, such as Afterlife and Reflector. And Reflector actually has David Bowie featured on it, which is quite interesting. David Bowie was, a, of course, a big proponent of Arcade Fire from the very beginning. Reflector is inconsistent. It is messy. It, I, think, I think it tried to do a lot of different sounds out of ambition and not out of laziness or not out of confusion of what they wanted to be. They just wanted to try a bunch of stuff, and they do try a bunch of stuff. That being said, not all of it goes over too well. There are some great tracks from this, but none that I personally find rank among my favorite Arcade Fire songs ever. Um, it is a fine album. On a good day, I might even be willing to say it's pretty good, but it just it's just inconsistent. It just... It's messy, 
and I think the highs just really outshine the lows on this one. Um, but it's not bad. Finally, we have everything now, which is F tier. F tier. What a miserably bad fucking album. I mean, it is... Arcade Fire is coming out with a new album soon, and I gotta say, I can't even be excited about it. This is one of my all-time favorite bands, and I can't even be excited for a new album because everything now killed all of my hope in Arcade Fire that hard. This album sucks so hard. The title track is pretty good ABBA worship, and there are some actually pretty good tracks toward the very, very end. But everything in between that is fucking miserable. <laughs> Some songs on here are so god-awful, like Creature Comfort and Peter Pan. Just like, what were they even doing? It's not even just the fact that they went in a more dancey and synth-led direction. If that's what they wanted to do, fine. I mean, every fucking indie band felt the need to do that in the 2010s. And, it, you know, and a lot of them were inspired by Arcade Fire when they did it. You know, if they want to do it, fine. But, God, just, I mean, they... They proved, if nothing else with this album, that they can't really pull that off too well. It's just not what their what their what their songwriting is for. And the concept of like anti-consumerism is just so fucking ham-fisted on this album. It just does not work. It does not say anything interesting. And God, it just so many things just are like facepalm worthy shit in regards to that. Like the infinite content tracks, which like, oh wow, that's so clever, guys. Like a uh, very, very bad album. I gotta say, uh, Win Butler announced that uh, it's leaving the band after this last album. So this is gonna be their last album, whatever comes next. And I, I, I really do hope it's great. I haven't listened to the singles yet. I kind of just want to be surprised, but I really hope that it, it ends up being great because I would love to hear a good Arcade Fire album again. Uh, Reflector, you know, is okay. Everything now is a complete pile of trash, so it can't be hard to beat that, but we'll see. Uh, and anyway, that is my Arcade Fire tier list. So if you're watching on the YouTube channel, uh, you can catch the Music Breakdown live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. MST. I'd love to see you there. Everything you just saw was streamed live, and you can come see it next time. So thanks for watching.